Hello and good evening everyone. I'm certain that you already have seen the four videos that I already uploaded of the four games that I had in set three. Those are the first four games I had ever had in set three. So I wanted to do an additional video of, you know, my initial impressions. How, what do I think about set three? What do they think about the games? And I also wanted to show you some new stuff that you for sure didn't see during the games because there's so much stuff happening at the same time. And... You know, I wanted to approach the set the same way everyone else would be approaching it. So I didn't talk with the developers about what should I play, what should I build, which synergies seem to be the best and so on. So I wanted to just be like kind of thrown into the game and see how it, how it goes. So if you have seen the games, you probably have seen me like being super confused, uh, but also very, let's say, dr drawn in because this set feels for me like kind of like um let's say a little bit blast from the past from season one when it comes to the feeling of the battles but at the same time it feels very well balanced at least from the four games that i had that that's something that resembles the set two from me uh for me you know so it's uh my first impression from from set three is that it's definitely less chaotic than set two in set two you had so many different like animations, summons, you know, a lot of colors, explosions, and so on. And all of the fights kind of felt like, oh, you know what? I have no clue what happened. There was a lot of explosions and colors and, and just people flying left and right. But I, I couldn't necessarily, like, pinpoint stuff that was happening or was very impactful during the games. And that's something that I felt in set three. Uh, the games were m way more enjoyable for me to kind of watch and just, un you know, watch unfold. And that's very mm, important for the players and for the devs, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming as well, because it creates more enjoyable time spent during the games. So that's one thing. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about that stuff in, in, in a bit. I wanted to show you some new stuff first. And I know I'm not a YouTuber, you know, so this is going to be like a very crude way of presenting stuff. I hope you guys uh, will, you know, forgive me for that. Uh, so they'll, they'll be coming, mm, you know, whenever you, you win a fight, you're dealing damage to your opponent's little legend, and that was always done with, like, those blasts, right? And I see that in the asset pack, we actually have three different animations with three different tiers. That means that they either gonna be done, like, through, like, you know, maybe battle pass, or maybe the, we just for RP, who knows? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm just gonna show you a video here of a fight, and you're gonna see at the final animation, here it goes, you see, there was a new, new animation, that was tier 1, now this is tier 2, right here, come on, do it, finish the fight, here we go, see, this is tier 2, so it's a little bit bigger, and then it's tier 3, you know, we're just gonna rewind, I mean, fast forward, whatever, oh, big one, Right, so that's one of them. Then we have like a bomb. This is a tier three bomb. Like a big explosion. And then we also have a laser. I'm going to assume those will be in the battle pass. In the new one. But we'll, we'll see. And yes, by the way, this is set to characters. Yes, yes. Everyone is aware of that. See, there's like a laser. Just dealing damage. So... This is the new stuff that, that basically wasn't shown in the games. Um, set 3 also feels more like, let's say, uh, graphically enjoyable for me. Uh, especially the carousel, that's something that really hit me uh, fast. And and, and uh, was very cool to see kind of like a new vibe um, to, to the set. So, now, when it comes to other stuff that we have, um, we're gonna talk about uh, a little bit about the compositions because 100% you didn't see everything that was happening in the game. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna show you guys some compositions in general, and we'll talk about it and what are, what were my impressions of them. You know, so we're gonna just go through all the compositions that we have. Actually, like some cool um, graphics here. This is the Blade Masters, uh, and as you can see, there's actually you know, Blade Masters so far were in all three seasons. 
Uh, but I feel like in this one, they're actually the most enjoyable because they feel like the most balanced. We'll see how it goes in the game because, we, you know, well, not gonna lie, Blade Masters were always the problematic, uh, let's say, trait. That was whenever you used a, a Blade of the Ruined King on someone who isn't a Blade Master, suddenly he became a problematic champion. So we'll see how it goes. But in general... Uh, the piece that shines so far in, after the four games that we had, uh, Irelia felt insane to me. She was just dealing damage left and right. Whenever she killed someone with her ultimate, she actually got another one for free, so it was insane. Uh, Yasuo is exactly the same as it was. Fiora is also the same, uh, like from set one, so it's like a you know throwback. And we have Kyle, uh, which was different. She also had different traits, so completely new character. Shen. Is literally the one from set one if i'm not mistaken has the same ultimate but the new skin uh master Yi was different but i can't remember there are so many characters you know it's it's but blade masters you, you kind of feel like at home you know you go into set three and if you want to play something that you're familiar with you can go for blade masters and you're probably just you know just gonna put in some chronos in that will speed up the attacks which kind of like you know kind of works right because that's very good and <laughs> and we're gonna talk about that in, in a second. But in general, Blade Masters, whenever someone had some six Blade Masters in the game, they felt very powerful. But obviously, they're one of the easiest to build. Uh, they don't require like you know specific builds to just make it work. You just pitch in all of them, and, and it's kind of good, especially with Irelia at Silver. Um, then we have Blaster, which is like a new way of of playing Gunslingers. They have additional attacks, but every fourth attack, if I'm not mistaken. We have a new version of Misfortune as a tier 5. Uh, there's also Graves. Uh, sorry, Gangplank. Um, wait, is it Gangplank Graves? Actually, not certain, but wanted to show you something. Because there's a Mercenary. There's a trait that is called Mercenary. It's, it's, it's two characters in the game that are required for that. And they actually get you something new, very, something very cool. Because you're able to upgrade the spells through the shop so now pay attention this is a very short video as you can see here uh we have gangplank right so okay th this is gangplank that okay so he wasn't a blaster never mind well you know you can fault me for no re not remembering every single of the 50 characters of the new set that i have seen in four games uh but in general the mercenaries right they're able to buy upgrades of spells in their own shop which is a huge game changer. I didn't have a chance to actually play Mercenaries yet, but it's something new and cool, and I'm very excited to see how that actually, uh, you know, will uh, will impact the games in general. So, but Blasters, um, it's like a different way of approaching Gunslingers from set one, uh, so it's pretty cool to see. We have Azrael, uh, who has his ultimate, uh, and it actually kind of works like a, a bit of like a poison, because whenever someone is hit by his ultimate, his next spell um, next spell is increased by 40% mana cost. So it's kind of cool. And then we have Lucian. Can't remember if I played him. Um, but Misfortune has the same con. But from what I talked with Moddog, um, the main developer of, of TFT when it comes to balance, he said that, his, that her AI is way better than it was. Also, what is very cool, we have Graves here, um, who is not the mercenary, but he is a space pirate. And this is the new way of, of approaching the pirates from set one. As you can remember, if you played set, set one, pirates were very RNG, but you just pulled them in, into any composition and they kind of worked because you were get, getting like a passive gold. The space pirates, they have a different way of enabling the, the bonuses because the space pirates need to actually defeat someone in combat to have a chance of getting something. And it's a... At two pirates, you have a 50% chance to get one gold after the after the defrag, let's say like that. And if you have four of them, which is very, you know, kind of um, not at least the build because it requires a tier five unit to enable the four four space pirates. But if that happens, you have a 10% chance additionally. Um, you know, um, you have the 50% chance to to get gold, but also have 10% chance to get a basic item component. So when I read the description of the of the trade, I was like, that's that's broken, right? That's that's insanely valuable. But at the same time, then I realized it's super hard to build, requires a tier five unit, which is not easy to do, especially, you know, you can get super lucky at seven, but that's not gonna happen every single game. 
um, but it will create very memorable memorable memories. And if it's super late in the game, you might actually not get that many item components. Uh, but it might be worth still investing into it. But it's still remember four space bars to pull it off. Um, so that's kind of kind of important. Uh, but it pulls in like a like a. It's a new way of playing pirates that I very much like. So we'll see how that goes. Um, then we have what is the next composition? The next composition is brawlers, and you know we we have seen brawlers in the previous uh, season, uh, in season one, and that's um that's a very for me, the return of brawlers is the reason. Mm, sorry, it's the outcome, not the reason. The outcome of the fact that in set two, the only viable front line was basically either wardens or berserkers with three lockets and that's it because berserkers had a lot of hp and you know you get additional hp with the lockets but basically nothing else works maybe a yorick with ga as a frontline or a scion or something like that but in general there were lack of options when it comes to frontline and in set three we have uh the vanguard we have protectors and we have brawlers this time there's less brawlers there's only four but you know one of my favorite units from set one is actually making comeback which is blitzcrank with a new skin but the same uh at least i think exactly the same spell but i didn't read the description but i remember that he was pulling off um creatures but he might actually not do it in the beginning of the round he had to get mana so that was that might have been a little bit different Trogat has the same ultimate and it's also void and it requires three voids to get the true damage, but two voids are tier four, so it's not that easy to pull off. Then we have a Malphite who is way different than the set two because he gets shield uh, instead of uh, the CC. He's a tier one unit, and we have Vi that didn't have the chance to play. Um, but Brawl is as a you know as, like, like, uh, as a return of a trait I kind of like because as I said I like to have different option when it comes to frontliners. Then we have uh, this was Celestial. And Celestial was, if I remember correctly, giving you heal for the entire trait. If you had two Celestials, they were given 10% of the heal. If you had four, it was like, if I'm not mistaken, 20 or 25. But it was giving like a um, team-wide composition lifesteal. So that was a very interesting, that is a very interesting concept that I feel might be very impactful in the game. Uh, especially since Ash is now a sniper and she deals way more damage whenever someone is far away from her. Uh, so this will also impact the way you compos you make a composition. Uh, and there's a Lulu, which is a tier 5 character and, and casts like two polymorphs per her, per her ult, uh, which is also very cool. You, you have seen that in some of the games that we had uh, in set 3. But the Celestial seems to be something that you can splash like a Mystic. Also, that's very important to say about set 3 in set 3. I feel like you're not pushed to build like a six six um, units of one trait. You actually will build like a combination of small things to like make make something cool out of nothing, you know. And if that will be pushing people to innovate and adapt to the playing field and use soft counters against compositions of other players, that's fantastic, because then every single game will actually feel different, and you will feel less forced uh, to build a special composition, a, a specific composition. The, which also, uh, if we talk about this this um, this one thing, when it, when, we, when it comes to forcing compositions, it's also way harder, I think this is my initial impression, so I might be wrong, but my initial impression is the way harder to force a composition in set 3, because the economy works different you get way less gold in the beginning of the game but it evens out during the mid game well basically you get to a point where after wolves you get way more gold than in the previous stages of the game and you kind of make up for the slower early game because of that there will also changes to the player damage so you don't get so much damage in the early game if you're a little bit on the weaker side of the compositions and so on because well you know you have less options to buy less options to buy champions from the shop because you have less gold in set two, which is kind of annoying to be honest. But now when I think about it, in most games you are buying everything in the shop in the first stage, 
and then in the second stage you were choosing something to keep and not but in general in set one sorry in set two there were almost no decision making uh in the first stage unless you were going for um specific uh income slots because otherwise we were just buying everything and making something out of it in this case you're gonna go for specific creatures that you like and you think that we're gonna they're gonna be good in the early game because you cannot buy just the entire shop most of the time now this is chronos um and this is actually a very cool trait because it, it kind of works the longer the game goes on because every four seconds your entire team gains attack speed when you have two chronos it was 10 percent attack speed when you have four chronos it was 35 then you have this, if you have six chronos it was 75 percent so it was kind of actually sick when you have six and it also brings one of the most interesting characters um to the game in set three it's trash he has way different ultimate than in set two because he you have seen that in one of the games that we had he actually pulls a creature a random champion from your bench to the playing field he and now it's important in the games that we had in the beta well actually alpha um set three games they were counting towards the traits whenever someone new was pulled but that's not gonna work in the uh final release so it's not as powerful but it can actually bring you know like think about it like th this way this guy has like a cooldown force of nature built in into himself and if it if if you build it around it and you give him mana you know the fastest way possible then he can bring multiple creatures because that's an ultimate he can just cast 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 and cast you'll get a, a lot of just three champions on your board you know so you can build a specific lineup around it and i like that a lot so that's pretty cool and chronos in general felt like something that you can just splash in into everything they've Felt very powerful with Blade Masters, but it might also be very, very powerful with um, basically Blasters, right? Because the Gunslingers. And also with uh, Mages, because whenever you get attack speed, you get more mana because you attack more often. So that kind of works with almost everything. Now, when it comes to uh, Cybernetic, I didn't have much uh, opportunity to play with it because I chose to play something else because I've, I felt that many people played Cybernetics and I wasn't wrong and they always felt powerful. This, the stats improvement from the items are very very powerful and the Irelia is itself very powerful so yeah, Cybernetic is gonna be a thing uh, it, it's, especially in the early game it's gonna be very um, heavily used by a lot of players I feel like you know, because even a one star unit with just one item, one component doesn't have to be an entire item um, will get so much stats you know, so it, Cybernetic might be very cool and it also works well with Blade Masters uh, so you can see the, the two blade masters built in into into the cybernetic pool because we have Royalia and Fiora. Then the next was Darkstar, and Darkstar was one one of my games that I played with and felt kind of cool. You know, there's actually I think six of them because it, if I remember correctly, I had to get six Darkstar to have like the maximum power. Uh, so it's someone's missing here. Uh, Mordekaiser, if I'm not mistaken, also had a different skin, but I might be wrong. But it felt like he was purple. And he had a different skill than in set 1. Because he had like this shield that deals AoE damage. But Darkstar feels a little bit like Shadow. Because whenever you get stacks on damage. And that stacks on damage are transferred whenever a champion is killed. So it's like a reverse light from, um, from set 2. It felt very cool to play. And you can also make a spatula item out of this. So there might be a lot of... A lot of combinations, you know, that you can do out of Darkstar. What is very important also, Jin was dealing six, sick damage, not six, sick damage. I'm not mistaken, I had like a um, auto attack that dealt 2.5k damage and he, he had one item or something like that. It, it was really insane. So Darkstar with the combination of the sniper, because I had the Caitlyn win, um, there's an option to make a Jin like an insane um insane insane damage dealer because every four of his attack also deals like 250 percent so it, it was insane uh then we have demolitionist uh which also can be a spatula item and they 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 gain like a stun if i'm not mistaken it was a two second stun or 2.5 second stun with their ultimates uh i mean their spells and uh that was pretty cool 
remember that one of these demolitions is actually a mech pilot, and the mech pilot will gain the demolition trait if it's enabled. Uh, and the uh, gangplank here is also a mercenary that we shown that I shown you in the video. So there's a lot of combinations, man. I mean, we're gonna talk about the mech in a second. But here we have infiltrators. So infiltrators um, are a bit, little bit different. They are like assassins, but their their jump pattern is way different than, than assassins. I felt like it it was... I wasn't sure because I played not that many infiltrators, but if I'm not mistaken, it goes in a straight path. So it's easier to aim at someone. And that maybe might be a game changer for assassins. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Aurelian Soul doesn't jump, but I might be wrong. I saw him in two games. He's like a different singed of set three. He doesn't attack. He just, just like... Sh shoots out small ships that deal damage. So if I'm not mistaken, he's a great Morello user uh, because they deal magic damage and that should work exactly the same way as the Singed. And he's a rebel, so there's a lot of tankiness involved. But I guess he's an infiltrator, so maybe he jumps at the start of the game. I, I don't know. Dude, there's so much new stuff and I'm so excited about Sith 3. Uh, then we have um, Mana Reaver. And I didn't have a chance to play Mana Reaver yet. If I'm not mistaken, Mana Reaver was uh, kind of like a like a poisonous trait when they they deal damage to increase the the cost of the next spell of their uh, target. And when you had two Mana Reavers, it was the first attack in the fight. If you had four Mana Reavers, so four of them, it was every single attack. Uh, but it's tough to build four of them because Trash is tier five. And yeah. So that was one thing, but Irelia is one of those key components here, and as I said to you before, she actually is a sick damage dealer, so mana reavers, like two mana reavers might be a thing uh, that you see a lot of a lot of times in the game. Now, mech pilots. Mech pilots are, I think like few people played it, I played it as well because I really had to see the Garen, the mech Garen uh, in play, and it felt so fun. It felt so fun to combine the three creatures with three different items to make like a combo. My first thought, because I I saw the new the new item, the portal, right? Instead of Titanic Hydra, you have the portal that whenever your creature dies, you spawn like a meat shield, like a demon that has a lot of HP, doesn't deal a lot of damage. And I thought to myself, well, how can I combo that? So first of all, well, got an angel, and then put those two into a mech, because the mech combines, get those items in, the mech dies, spawns, a demon gets revived, dies, spawns a demon, pilots get out, and they have the same items, right? Because you have a GA with a portal, you get another two pair of demons, so you have so much meat, uh, but unfortunately it didn't work. So <laughs> I, I felt very smart, but unfortunately it didn't work. So because it, it, whenever GA is triggered, it's not actually when your opponent, when your character dies, it, it just stops them from dying. So it doesn't work with the portal, but I learned something crucial. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> but in general, feels like mech, if someone finds like a very OP combination, might be OP. We're going to see how it goes. But it, it's a very cool factor in the games. It's something that people will just build to, to feel like, oh, something cool is happening, you know. But at the same time, there's a lot of combinations coming in because it, it, it like combines the items from all the three characters. The more, the, the, the more powerful characters you have, the more powerful the, the mech will be itself. So... It's pretty cool. And the traits are also combined. So you have a lot of combination with the spad items as well. Uh, this is the mercenary. As I told you, the mercenaries will upgrade the spells. Uh, from the shop, I had one misfortune. I never had a gangplank or I didn't buy it or something like that. But in general, I, I don't have much to say about it. But it feels like a very cool mechanic. Uh, then we have Mystic, which we already know how it works. So I don't really need to say anything about it. Uh, and then we have Protector which were casting shields on themselves um, after casting a spell. Um, so they're like an additional option of, of a frontliner. Uh, if I remember cor correctly, Jin Zhao had like 35 mana, so he could like cast it a lot of times, but it didn't stack, so he would have to get a lot of damage. And it's pretty interesting that we have Rebel. Whenever they're grouped next to each other, they were, they were giving each other buffs when it comes to like, like a sh like, um, physical shield. Uh, to shield them from the early damage, kind of like a built-in locket from set one. And then we have Sniper, which we have Caitlyn, Ash, and Jin. When that's active and you have two snipers, 
uh, or three, right? Because they're all snipers and then then it's active. Every single hex to your to your opponent's champion deals 10% additional damage. So when someone's across the map, it deals a lot of damage. So this is why Jin was able to like deal 2.5k, but I'm sure it can deal like something absolutely ridiculous, like 15 or 20k damage uh, because of that as well. Caitlyn, by the way, requires 125 mana, and when she snipes someone, it deals, even at a 1-star, like 800 base damage. <laughs> so <laughs> she's pretty sick. You know, especially when you have Kronos, uh, she gets the mana faster, she actually can just, as a 1-star, delete someone way more powerful uh, than, than herself. And then we have Sorcerer, which is a little bit different than in, in set 1, it increases the overall AP, um, but it can be, if I'm not mistaken, just two sorcerer, four sorcerer, and six sorcerer, which is also pretty cool. Uh, you can see the Velcos, the tier four void unit that will have true damage if you're gonna have the other two Kazakhs and, and Trogat. Um, and it's also pre felt pretty cool. Then we have Space Pirate, we already talked about them, and then we have Star Guardian, which is like the new mana, mana feat let's say, in set 2, whenever one of the Star Guardians just casts a spell, all of your Star Guardians get ma additional mana, and you can make that, I think in one game I had like 7 Star Guardians, because you can make it actually from a Spatula item, so for me it was a cool combination with Space Pirates, because then you could actually do Darius that was doing the Execute, right? And he was doing the, a lot of Executes, because he was a Star Guardian. Because he was getting so much mana. So I felt like that was a cool combination. Then we have Vanguard, which gets additional armor whenever you have more Vanguards, which is like an additional, you know, this is like a like a prime example of how your frontline can look. And then uh, I, I guess that's it. I guess that's it. So from other impressions, the items that we are having, there were a lot of new items. Um, I'm sure that Redemption was reworked. It was like a talisman that was giving you your nearby allies mana whenever your um, champion with the talisman was actually casting a spell. Um, there was this portal instead of the titanic hydra. There was some reworks. Um, there's so much stuff just being played is or changed. So I can't wait to see set three arrive at PBE, dive in straight into it, and you know just enjoy it because a new set. It's basically like a new game. It might still be teamfight tactics, but you have to relearn everything, and that's something that I find very enjoyable about the game because it it it, it pushes you to enjoy the game, but also be more creative. I feel like there's a lot of games that you kind of play like several years, but you never feel like oh, I'm doing something new and exciting, right? And in TFT, because every few months you have to relearn the entire game, which for me is fantastic and uh i guess that's gonna be it from me my initial impressions are just very positive about set three and i hope you guys will feel the same we're gonna see each other on the rift well actually on in the galaxy i guess this time ha, not on the rift but in the galaxy and uh yeah thank you for watching if you didn't watch the games yet well then just jump straight to it, but I'm almost certain that you, you actually did watch the games before coming to this video. Uh, but also, thank you very much, Riot, for the invite. It's super cool that we're able to test the new season from our homes, and that was very enjoyable. And, you know, that's it. All right, see you guys next time.